<laughs> Howdy folks. Little John in the brewery. Uh, and I'm about to uh, wash some yeast. Uh, I've said previously I was going to go through and redo some of the old brew school videos. First one I'm going to do, washing yeast. Uh, and what's brought this up particularly, uh, I've been wanting to do this for a little while, but I've been having a conversation today with one of the Patreons um, and he's having trouble with the process uh, and I think that's because uh, perhaps in that first video the, the process wasn't completely clear. So I'm going through again. It's, it's just going to be fairly quick, it's going to be quick chop and change, but we'll get through uh, the process. So just to show you, keep a track of how much time this takes, it's currently 20 past five. Um, so I've got myself, well, I've got five jars. Uh, I just use Makona jars. Um, if you drink coffee, spare chance you might have some of these around. Um, I've got mason jars and things around, but these I find are a really good size. So this is the bigger jar. So this is the, um, I think the 150 or 200 gram jar um, and the little jar. So I've got four of these. Two are filled with cooled boiled water. Um, they're all sanitised. And the one little fella. Right. Um, could do with three bottles or three jars of the water. Um, and I think two will do me for what I want to do today. Uh, now, first thing I need to do is obviously get a yeast cake. Now, um, this would have been so much easier to have done yesterday when I had a normal fermenter with some yeast in it. Uh, but what I've got here uh, is corny keg from the last batch of extractor ganser. So this has got a Kolsch yeast in it, the um, Lalamond Kong. Uh, there's a little beer in here and a little bit of yeast. Um, I would have, and the reason I said I would have preferred to use the fermenter is because this beer is hard to separate from this yeast cake. So I'm going to have to separate the beer from the yeast before I can actually start washing. And I can see just I, that this is going to get a little bit messy. This isn't going to be the easiest way to pour in this, but I don't have a big funnel, which would be good. But here we go. And as I said, yes, it's beer, it's carbonated. Um, so, all is good. So, that's probably a third of what's actually in there. But what I will do now is I'm going to let that sit. Just let the yeast drop out of that uh, so I can get the beer off and then actually get started with our first step. So, while that's going on, I'm going to grab a beer. Alright, I had myself a bit of a beer. Uh, and this is starting to separate. And you can see quite clearly now we've got the yeast settling down the bottom. And this is all... Well, there's beer with still some yeast in it. But let's get this happening. I'm going to get that yeast off there, so I can just go into the jug here and I'll just pour it off, leaving as much of that yeast behind as I can. Uh, so if that's, if that's where you're starting from with some beer in there, then get, let it settle, get the beer off. Um, so if you're starting just that normal fermenter, get all the beer off the fermenter while your yeast cake's still nice and settled in the bottom. Get all that beer off. Pour in, yeah, half a jar of water or um, thereabouts into your, in, onto your yeast cake. Swirl it all up and then pour that into your jar. And you normally find with, with a normal 23 litre batch, you'll get that. You can split that over two over two um, two jars and go through. I'm only doing the one. Um, a, because I don't, I don't need to keep any more than 
one more to the east and um, just makes it easier for what I'm doing. Now this froth is going to be just annoying to look at but it's not going to cause us any issues. So normally if, it, <laughs> if you're taking the beer off you're not going to have the froth on there. Um, I could get in there with a spotty spoon and get rid of some of it. Which well, I'm not going to do because I haven't got a sanitized spoon so let's keep this clean. So I'll pour a whack of water in there. Now yeah, you need plenty of water for rinsing. Plenty. Yeah, that's going to explode if I leave that on there with the gas in there. Give your yeast a good swirl up. Get it all, get it all suspended. Now right. yeah, I'm going to let that sit for anywhere from 8 to 15 minutes. I'm going to watch it and see how it goes. Let that start to settle a little bit. And what we will get is the, the heavier the heavier particles in there are going to drop first. And that's the stuff we want to get rid of. We want to stick with the yeast, which is generally going to be lighter and settle out, out slower. So I'll give that a little bit and we'll come back. Okay, it's now been about six minutes. And you can see we're starting to get a few wacky crud down the bottom there. Yeah, there's going to be some yeast in there, but a lot of that is just it's, it's crud and dead cells and things that we don't necessarily want. So we want to take this liquid off the top. I can see it's just starting to get a little light layer on top, which is just starting to show that the yeast is starting to settle out. This is our original jar. This is our new stuff that we've taken off. This is where we're looking to get our, our good, clean, healthy yeast from. And again, swirl it up and we'll let it sit. Now, it's going to be hard for you to probably see there. But this, this is actually quite a clean looking yeast cake. Um, there was no hops, no dry hopping or anything in this brew. Um, it's a kit it's a kit brew, kit brew, kit brew, kit beer. It's had nothing added to it. So there's no hops in there at all. Uh, which means we have got quite a clean um, quite a clean clean yeast cake there. And uh, I can see just around the top there's just a really thin light layer on there which is where the yeast is starting to settle out. Um, for, for the time being I'm going to keep this uh, just to see what it does but we're not likely going to want to use that again. So I said you're decanting off the top and keeping what you take off the top that bottom layer goes. We're not letting the yeast settle out we're letting the crud, the dead yeast cells all the stuff that's all the byproducts of, um, of fermentation, which can like which I said in a hoppy beer can be hop, yeah, you know, hop matter and things like that. Um, letting that drop out first because it's heavier, it drops out. The yeast is lighter and wants to, and it sort of tends to stay in suspension a bit longer, um, which is why we cold crash a brew um, to get it, to get it to drop. Um, this keg particularly has been sitting out here for uh, at room temp. Um, this yeast as a result is, as much as it's not active, it's not really asleep either. Um, and what I'm getting now is that this is starting to drop out and you can start to see it building up there on the bottom there. Now, I'm going to let this fella go. Uh, And so what we're looking at, it's quite possible that because this is such a clean yeast cake to start with, that what we get in this jar, uh, just in the second round of rinsing, will be quite enough to keep. Um, but I'm going to let it sit just for a couple of minutes, uh, and I will take the top layer off and see what we get from that. 
on its own. Uh, I'm going to have a look at this by itself. It does look quite, it is looking quite clean in there already. Back soon we'll see. Okay, this has now sat for about another six minutes. Uh, you can see we've got a nice little little layer there. Um, as I said, that's looking actually quite clean uh, and creamy. But for the sake of process, um, I'm now going to take this layer off. Now this is the layer where I'm expecting LA wood juice is going to be. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking in this in this case with uh, this being such a clean yeast cake, but I'm thinking there is probably some usable yeast in there. Um, but I'm going to take this top layer now. So I'm going into this small jar because this will basically be my holding jar now. I'm going to get most of what's there. Okay. Now, yeah, looking at that. So that I'm just going to let sit. And we'll see what we get. But looking at what's in that jar, that is fairly clean what is in there. Um, and again this is realistically not the best yeast for you know, giving you an example of what we're looking at because uh, it is fairly clean uh, when you do have a bit more hop in there or uh, you, you're gonna notice that your yeast case is gonna be a little bit a little bit darker in color so this jar it's original one which I actually put a little bit of water in and just got another swirl um, it's I don't know if you're going to really be able to see it there, but it's a couple of shades darker in colour than what this jar is because it's got more crud in it. But the big thing for me you can often tell is by looking at your actual once it's set, looking at what you've got, that, that bloody your solid material, um, is that the yeast does look creamy as opposed to sort of lumpy. Uh, which again is something you'll understand when you start when you go through and start rinsing yeast. You'll get it. You'll get, get You'll see what I mean by that sort of expression. Um, but I'm thinking that's all fairly clean. And the reality is, you could probably reuse that without any problem. You could probably just pitch this without any without any real issue either. It does look fairly clean. But as I've said before, for, for keeping it, for storage, you want it as clean as you can get it. I want to rinse it as clean as I can get. I'm happy to get 30 ml of good clean yeast from a from a yeast wash. Um, and if I do a full batch, yeah, you can probably get 60, 60 to 80 ml. So I can I'll get two two vials. Um, so Two thirds full, so yeah, 30 or 40 mil per vial. Um, and that's what you want. If you want to keep it because you're keeping it, you want it as clean as you can get. You don't want anything else in there, you want just yeast as much as you can. It makes calculating your numbers and your starters down the track a lot easier. Um, and the cleaner you can get it, the less of it you've got to keep, so it makes storing it easy. Um, it's simple to go, okay, well, that's pretty good, we can just pour the bloody, pour our beer off that and we'll just put that into some vials and keep it. And you're going to have, you know, four or five vials, five, even, you know, probably even possibly, you know, six vials off your batch. Um, you don't need that much. Um, it takes up a lot, it's going to take up a lot of space in your fridge. Um, I haven't got a lot of yeast here at the moment with, bloody, with fridge issues, I've got rid of a whack of me, um, the yeast bank I did have, but yeah, at one stage here yeah, I think I had um, had about 40 vials. It take and it can take up a fair bit of space, so if you, you don't want to keep it more than you need to. Okay, so that fell in there. I can put in the fridge. 
and just let that drop till I've got all the yeast in, let it drop clear, pour the liquid off the top, put a little bit of fresh cool board water into that, swirl it up and stick it into my bar uh, and keep it. Put it in the fridge, no problem at all, and that's going to be lovely. Uh, now that's not going to come up tonight, that's going to take a little while. I said, I'll put that in the fridge and let it sit for you know, a day or two before I go into a vial. Um, let's see if I can get that. Extra bit of liquid off there. Yeah. That is the yeast that's left in that jar. Uh, and it looks pretty good. Um, it's, it's nice. It's creamy. Doesn't look. Yeah, you, know, you can look at it. You can see discoloration through it um, when there's crud still in there, and that looks pretty clean. So that's come up pretty well. And the reality is, I could could probably keep that without too much issue. Um, and I thought that from that initial wash rinse, it did, did look pretty clean. And even that stuff that's left over from the, the very first, it's it is fairly clean. Uh, and again, this is why I say you you can, you can reuse that fresh yeast cake if there's not anything you know any of that crud and stuff in there because it's going to be fairly clean if you can get all the liquid off it and get into the yeast cake itself it is fairly clean um and i said I, I really probably could have just stuck at that level probably could have stuck that jar um straight in the fridge and just taken yeast off that uh without any problem and in this volume here, it probably would have worked. But I said, this is probably only about a third of the actual yeast cake that's in, off that brew. So if, was, if this was a full batch, it'd be too much. So going the extra one really will help. And that yeast there is going to be so much cleaner at the end of the day. How do you work out what that yeast is? I work on the basis that that fresh yeast, when it's originally washed, it's about 3 billion cells per milliliter. Um, so, at that rate, to pitch this directly onto, on, onto a standard beer, you want 50 to 60 mil uh, to direct pitch. Um, so if you're just taking this straight off a batch uh, and wanting to re-pitch, probably what was in this jar would probably go close to being enough on a, on a full batch. Uh, that there's not going to be enough. Well, I, I would estimate we're probably only going to get maybe 15 or 20 mil out of that. We're not going to get a lot out of that jar. But that will make, that's enough to make a nice starter. Nice two litre starter. I'd have plenty of the yeast to pitch onto you know, any brew or well, any average sort of brew I do. So I'll stick him in the fridge. Then leave it leave it to settle. Uh, well, I'm really interested in how clean this this yeast here actually is. <laughs> actually can that does look pretty good. Uh, it's and again, this is going to be hard to see. Um, See down that yeast. 
it's still liquidy. It's running off the bottom of the jar. Um, that's the first. That's the first lot we took off. This is the second lot of washing. You can see it's starting to get just a little bit creamier on the bottom of the jar, and that's where you know when you you start to get a good yeast concentration. It starts to get creamier. It's not so watery. It's not breaking up as much. So that that is showing. This this is a higher concentration of yeast. Uh, it's still not as pure as it could be. It should just be a you know, not solid, but a nice homogenized um, thick slurry. And that's what this is going to drop out to be. It's just starting to drop out now. Um, but you, you you will realistically you will need to cold crash your final jar to get the drop out fully. Um, I could see this on the on, on the table here for days, and it's not gonna it's not gonna clear fully. I will if I left it long enough, but I'm not, I'm not gonna leave it sitting here for four or five days at ambient temperature. Um, I'll get in the fridge, drop it out, and get it off as quick as I can. So I'll pop it in the fridge now. I'll come back and take a quick look at this before I finish the video. See them. Okay, it's about uh, 25 minutes since this jar went in the fridge and you see now we're starting to get a uh, layer on the bottom of that jar and it's still, still the wacky yeast there in suspension. Most of that colour in <laughs> is, is the yeast. So there's not a real lot in there, but as I said, well, I knew I was going to get a real lot. The target is not target of washing is not about the total volume. It's about the quality of the of the yeast that you're getting. Um, as I said I'd rather a smaller volume of yeast that's good quality and well, yeah, and good and clean, and hasn't got crud in it, and that's looking nice. It's nice and light. Not, that uh, offish white sort of colour, creamy looking. So, that's it. Let that sit now for, you know, 24, 48 hours before I um, go into a vial, decant the stuff off the top. And because if I let this sit in the fridge for, you know, for two days, it's going to be very compacted at the bottom, just like doing a cold crash on your, in your fermenter. I'll be able to get all that beer off the the water off the top uh, and leave that yeast fairly well untouched on the bottom. And I said just a little bit of um, cool board, freshly cool board water, swirl it up and into my vial, uh, cap it, good to go. And that'll last you as long as you want to keep it until you're ready to use it down the track. Uh, what do you want to do? That's a great way of keeping those unusual yeast strains. Um, <coughs> saves you some money. Yeah. Um, spend enough money on beer, is, you know, on the stuff that goes into the beer as it, as it is. We can save some money on some yeast. Why not? And yeah, you can save yourself anywhere from yeah eight to yeah twenty five dollars, depending on the kind of yeast that you want to be using in your beer so um, it's well worth a little bit of effort um, it's now uh, about 25 past six so it's taken what was it five I think it was 519 when I started um, so it's taken just over an hour um, to do it a couple of simple little steps waiting right between I've had, a, I've had a beer I've done past tasting video I've got dinner on the stove half cooked um, this happens while you're doing other things. It's simple, it's easy, it's a couple of jars, it's a simple clean up, and you've got lovely healthy yeast at the end of it. So, anyway, that's me. Done. Uh, hopefully this is a little bit clearer, and I guess it's been a little bit muddled with the, <laughs> the yeast didn't perform exactly how I wanted, but I'm hoping it's a little bit clearer on the process of getting from one to another. Uh, to get to the end. Uh,
give it a go. You just may, uh, may become something you do regularly in your brewery. Comments, questions, down the bottom, as per always. Patreons, thumbs up guys, cheers very much for your ongoing support. Keeps the channel going. If you aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button down there in the corner. That keeps the channel going as well. So does hitting that like button. It all helps out. But anyway, little John, I'm out of here. So, uh, till I see you again, we're uh, brewing beer, drinking beer, talking beer. Good brewing. <laughs>